Mr. Brennan, uh, we look at Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, Pakistan, but we also have the Horn, we have the Sahel, we have Central Asia, we have Southeast Asia. Um, given the increasingly franchised um, uh, uh, nature of global terrorism, and we have the U.S., um, even if we get bin Laden or Mullah Omar, what then is the future of terrorism? How will this actually affect our war against terrorism? Well, I do think it's important to take away the leadership of al-Qaeda um, because they do provide that type of inspiration uh, to the al-Qaeda organization. As you say, it has franchised now in a number of different areas. But it's critically important that we stay focused on the various areas of the world where al-Qaeda has manifested itself. I should point out the Horn of Africa, um, Yemen, uh, the Sahel, Southeast Asia. There are a number of individuals who have come from al-Qaeda core that have settled in those areas or come originally from those areas who have tried to exploit local conditions and local factors to recruit others to their twisted ideology. So I think it's important for us to continue to work very closely with the governments in terms of capacity building. They need to have the wherewithal that they can withstand the pressures that al-Qaeda places against them. But this is something that's going to be a struggle for many years to come, even if the individuals like bin Laden, Zawahri, Mullah Omar, and others are removed from the battlefield. Uh, we still have a whole other set of, of leaders and operational commanders that are going to be a worry for quite a while. If you ask uh, anybody in the military if you can kill all of the terrorists out there, the answer is no, because they continue to self-replicate. Mm -hmm. So how do you address the ideological dimension of this war on terrorism? whatever terminology we want to use, without some type of ideological counter to it. In other words, you can't just kill all the terrorists. You need something to, to give people some other thing. Is the administration doing anything on this front? I think there are two ways that we need to counter that ideological narrative that al-Qaeda has. One is that there needs to be a counter narrative from the Muslim world. And that's why we're working very closely with um, countries um, throughout the Middle East and, and the world so that they can have this pushback on Al-Qaeda. That what Al-Qaeda is, is promoting is inconsistent with the tenets of Islam. Recently, the Higher Islamic Council of Saudi Arabia came out in a very strong way denouncing the financing and the, the, um, the, the carrying out of terrorist attacks, saying that it is truly un-Islamic. I think that is important. That narrative has to get more attention, and I wish it would get more attention in the media. At the same time, Al-Qaeda has been able to, I think, gain recruits and to propagandize by misrepresenting what the United States and the West is about. And I think what we need to do is to ensure that as we present ourselves to the Middle East and to the rest of the world, we have to make sure that people understand that we're not out to conquer countries and to suppress Islam and to suppress their culture and their people. We are, you know, the United States should be seen as the uh, supporter of the interests and goals of these individuals who are in you know, the Middle East, South Asia and other places. So I think we have an obligation in the United States to make sure that we represent what we're about as a country, as a people, fairly. Mr. Brennan. Um your administration has shut down or is in the process of shutting down Guantanamo. You've closed the black sites. When someone is captured overseas, where are they sent and are they sent to Bagram? Well, right now there are two theaters of, of operations in terms of war, war theaters, Iraq and Afghanistan. And we have procedures and practices in place right now to be able to handle any individuals that has taken off the battlefield in either one of those countries. In the other areas of the world where we operate, we operate very closely with the host and local governments. And in most scenarios where that results in a capture or a detention of an individual, the local government will take them into custody um, in the first instance. And then depending on their nationality, they will either remain in that country or be moved to another country. And if they're an individual that is either an American citizen or American per U.S. person, or that there are warrants for their arrest or there's been an indictment here in the United States, then we will bring them uh, and, and prosecute them accordingly.